All right, everyone, I think we're ready to get started. I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Michael Whitman. He brings more than 20 years of experience teaching information security courses. As a distinguished researcher and author, he has written 10 widely used textbooks and published information systems research in top academic journals. He is also the executive director of the Center for Information Security Education, which supports cybersecurity education across the region. His topic today will be cybersecurity education at Kennesaw State University and the Institute for Cybersecurity Workforce Development. Please help me welcome Dr. Michael Whitman. Good afternoon and welcome everybody to this afternoon's session. Unfortunately, it won't be quite as stimulating as some of the other sessions you may have attended earlier. What I'd like to do today is to talk to you about what's happening at KSU in the area of cybersecurity education. Uh, we're continually bombarded with student questions trying to find out what can I get into either as a security major or not even as a security major that would make my academic preparation, my education, and they say my life more exciting and more interesting. So uh, some of the stuff that I wanted to talk to you today about, uh, a little bit about the history of security education at Kennesaw State. As you can see here, we taught our first security class in 1999. I know I was there, I taught it. Uh, that's a long time ago. It's interesting, it was, uh, we used to have this thing that would come out about every year and tell you what this year's college freshmen don't know. And it's like the, this year's college freshmen don't remember Reagan as a president, the Cold War, and things like that. Well, most of, this, most of the students I deal with now don't know 1999. They weren't here then. But we offered our first security class back then. We had our first security concentration, which is a four course sequence, and it's still available today. Uh, in around 2001. We also established a Center for Information Security Education at the time, and that has evolved over the decades. That's a method to engage industry and bring them into the classroom and to share the knowledge of what we're doing here on campus with organizations outside, and that includes professional organizations like the Metro Atlanta Information Systems Security Association. If you're not familiar with those guys, that's a, a great organization if you're even thinking about a career in security or even in technology. Uh, we had the first security degree, the first undergraduate security degree in the southeast at a public university here at KSU. It was only the second undergraduate degree in the United States at a public university. There were a couple of private schools up in the Northeast, up around DC, but at the time, most security programs were concentrations as part of a computer science, information systems, information technology degree. So we had the first security degree here. We've had the first 100% online e-campus security degree here only a couple of years ago, and that's the BS in cybersecurity, and I'll talk with difference about those two degrees here in a little while. Kennesaw State University was first designated by the National Security Agency in 2004 as a center of academic excellence in information assurance education. And at the, at the time, the federal government used the term information assurance to describe what we call information security. Information security, information assurance, cybersecurity, for all intents and purposes, those are the same thing that we're, we're talking about. KSU has been redesignated. Uh, we have to go through the process. It's like a, a curriculum accreditation every three to five years. So 2004, 2007, uh, 2012, 2015, and we're coming up again in 2021. Right now, there are two bachelor's degrees at KSU in security. The first one was the one that originally started as a, as a Bachelor of Science in Information Security and Assurance. And that was when uh, the, the Department of Computer Science and Information Systems was in the College of Science and Math here at KSU. In 2012, the Information Systems faculty moved over to the Coles School, where they are today, the Coles College of Business, and the degree changed to a Bachelor's of Business Administration in information security and assurance. 
Okay? That's uh, the, that, bot, that top one should say uh, business foundation, not IT foundation. It's what happens when you cut and paste. Uh, IT, uh, it's a business foundation if you're interested in a career in security management. You want to be in the C-suite. You want to be a chief information security officer, chief security officer. That's the career path for you. If you're interested in the technology side, you want to go through your professional career focusing on the technical challenges, maybe work in a security operations center, deal with incident response, disaster recovery, things like that. The Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity is the eCampus online degree that's available. And that degree has an IT foundation. And in fact, when you complete that degree, you automatically get a minor in IT. Uh, that has a, a technical foundation. It's identical to the BSIT for its first couple of years. And then you transition into the upper division security classes. And that's where you'll get the ability to combine the security knowledge. The security knowledge on both these degrees is very similar. Most of the classes are identical. It's the foundation, the preparation, that differs between the degrees. And most of these degrees also have minors. If you have another major and you're comfortable with your major, but you really want to just learn a little bit more about what it means to manage information securely. Because contrary to popular belief, neither of these degrees is really about technology. Both of these degrees, and in fact the entire field of security, is about protecting information. Now, right now in modern business, where is the information? It's in a computer somewhere. It's on a server. It's on your desktop. Either of those locations is going to involve some sort of IT department, some sort of technologist to manage the information, whereas the security professionals are the ones that are there to protect that information. But that does not exclude the requirement to protect information in a physical form. And that's a physical form not just in a hard copy like a printout or a report. That includes today a lot of mobile technology. Uh, we all walk around and in fact I brought my presentation over today on a thumb drive. If I forget that thumb drive that could be a compromise of information, except that right now all it has on it is this slideshow. But imagine the number of times you've copied a critical document, whether it's an academic uh, assignment or a work assignment, put it on a thumb drive, throw it in your backpack, your briefcase, your purse, what have you. And if that information got lost, there's a problem. So that's part of the realm of cybersecurity, but cybersecurity also addresses things like auditing, privacy, uh, forensics. When you get into the realm of digital forensics, looking for the root cause of a problem. These degree programs examine both the breadth and the depth of the security field. And then what you do with that degree really depends on your professional career interests. You could go work for a small company and be the security professional for the rest of your entire career. You could get hired on by one of the big consulting companies, Price Waterhouse, Ernst & Young. Those organizations will hire you, send you off to their high uh, intensity boot camps, get you trained up to their security standards, and then use you for three or five years to provide security services to their clientele. And for a lot of people, that's a, a very desirable career path because when you come out of that pipeline, having worked for those large consult consulting companies, you become a very high demand, high consumer product. Now, everybody wants to hire you. Now, interestingly enough, currently, both of those degree programs have a near 100% employment on graduation. That's something that few degrees here at KSU or even in the state can claim. When you walk off that stage, odds are you've had multiple job offers, you've probably accepted one of them, and you'll start shortly after graduation if you hadn't already started working for the organization. In some cases, these organizations are hiring our students as interns doing that so that they've been working with them already. Both the company gets to know the student, the student gets to know the company. You walk across the stage, 
you trade in your student ID card for an employee ID card and you just go right back to work. Salaries are good in these areas. They tend to be among the higher side ranging from anywhere from 50 to 75,000 for a starting employee. Okay, so the jobs are there, the salary is there, the technology and the knowledge is here. If you ever want to better understand any of the computing-based degrees here at KSU, we have a wiki. It's actually a web page. It used to actually be a legitimate wiki, but now it's a series of web pages called computerdegrees.kennesaw.edu. And what it is is it's a disambiguation site. In other words, student comes to KSU, I want to study computers. Okay, that's about nine bachelor's degrees to choose from, ranging from engineering to the College of Business. So this site is designed to help students understand and impossibly choose between the various degrees. The courses within those degrees are wide and varied. You can see here we've got uh, the average student will complete the program with between nine and 12 classes just in security. And that's a variety of options that allows you, us to, to expose the students to the breadth and depth of information and cybersecurity. Most of the courses that you'll run into has one or more books that were written by the faculty members that are teaching the classes, or at least in charge of the classes. And uh, there's uh, a lot of books that we have that we incorporate into our classes. This is what their students are shooting for, to be able to walk across that stage, receive their diploma, which says security from Kennesaw State. There are dozens of vendors at major organizations downtown that are ready for them. They understand what that security degree means. And that's what we want to help you as a student get to. Uh, as a faculty member or a staff person here at KSU, we're looking for ways to expand the inclusion of security both in technical and non-technical topics. So I'm willing to bet there's not a single degree program on campus that doesn't have an aspect of information security in it. If you're in the nursing program, you're going to be dealing with HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which is making medical uh, practitioners and their insurance carriers and their doctor's offices responsible for the protection of something called EPHI, patient health care information. And the E means a lot of these places are going to electronic records. Well, the protection of EPHI is an information security or a cybersecurity type job. And we have a program here at KSU, a master's in healthcare management and informatics which has a security class. And they, those students have to understand the technology and they have to understand the responsibility to protect information. Because like I said earlier, that's what we're here for and that's what we're here about. Okay? There's a number of other things that aren't directly linked to the classroom that are available here at KSU that are sponsored in part by uh, organizations like the Institute for Cybersecurity Workforce Development, which I'll talk about here in just a second. The first one of which is coming up here uh, in a couple of weeks. That is the Conference on Cybersecurity Education, Research, and Practice. And one of the things I wanted to make sure we talked about today is that we're having our National Security Awareness Month event on Friday, October the 11th at KSU Center room 300. We've got a panel of industry speakers, much like the one you're seeing here today, talking about various topics in cybersecurity and how it relates to education, focusing on the next generation of information security professionals. So there should be a lot of information. That is, of course, free to all KSU faculty, staff, and students. Uh, if you can find a place to park, you can come in, sit down, uh, enjoy the show. Held every spring, the Southeast Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition is sort of football for geeks. It's an intercollegiate event. In other words, every university has a team. They, students compete to be on the team. And when they are selected for the team, they train, 
They develop their skills, and then they compete head-to-head. Every year we have about 33 teams from throughout the southeast compete head-to-head online in a preliminary competition. Top eight teams come to KSU during our spring break. And the winner of that event, the on-site regional, then goes to the University of Texas San Antonio to compete in the national CCDC. The winners of the past CCDCs have been flown to Washington, met the vice president, got to tour the NSA, all kinds of cool cyber things uh, that ex- uh, expand from that competition. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. There are a number of programs, research programs, for our faculty members in cybersecurity in the area. Those are some of the things that we're developing. A lot of them involve students, students as Uh, co-researchers, students as subjects, and so there's a lot of stuff that we do to try and better understand security using our relationships here at KSU. And finally, things like we're talking about here today, industry security presentations. Uh, The Department of Information Systems and the Cole College of Business host a regular speaker event. They invite somebody to come in, lots of times there's pizza, uh, you come in and they'll, they'll, make, they'll have two or three speakers on security topics or general information systems computing topics. And so those are ways that anybody can get more exposure and more knowledge in information security, cyber security by tying yourself in. And if you want more information about any of these, I've got some email addresses at the end that you can write down and we will do our best to incorporate you into these events. How many people can read this diagram? Okay. This is the schematic for the Southeast Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. Okay. By the time you're ready to step into the competition, it'll be like a musician reading sheet music. Okay. It's a number of virtual systems that is part of a team's competition network. Every team in the SECCDC is assigned a network segment with servers and clients that are providing services much like your average small to medium business would. It's got a website, it's running email, it has an e-commerce system. All of those things are providing services. Now, the teams are evaluated on their ability to keep those systems up and running. And most teams do a great job of that until this little group we like to call the red team. It's a group of professional penetration testers shows up and then they become acting like hackers and they will attack the teams and it is very rare indeed when that team doesn't affect the student team's performance. The red team guys are good. We're talking about people who show up and only want to give you their initials because they either work for DOD, NSA, Serious black ops stuff here, you know. We have a lot of people that would normally be wearing uniforms, as in Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, Marine uniforms, who come down here, some of them take vacation time, to come to the events to help our students get better at security. So students have to keep those services up, they have to fight against the bad guys, and they have to respond to a never-ending set of job requests. If you've ever worked on the job, you'd swear your job would be a great place to work if they would just stop giving you new things to do. Your job, your, your, your day-to-day is already overfilled with the old stuff that they gave you to do. And then here they come with more stuff. Well, we give them 20 different tasks over a two-day window. And that's something as simple as write a report, something as complex as set up a brand new piece of software you've never seen before, get it up and running in two hours. So we put the pressure on them, and it's how the teams deal with that pressure that really gauges how successful they are. We've had institutions uh, that competed here that went on to win the national championships. Okay, we've had four winners from the southeast over the years. Here's some pictures of the KSU team from last year. You recognize some of the faculty there as well. Uh, we have other teams and sponsors that come to the event, they come to the event, we have about half a dozen to a dozen sponsors every year, they're coming to the event to recruit because it's a collection of over a hundred students who are excellent 
in security. They have to be excellent or they wouldn't be at the regional competition. So they come, they talk, we have a reception, they collect resumes, and once again, it's yet another opportunity for a student to have multiple job offers before they ever graduate. Most students compete during their sophomore, uh, junior year. KSU, it tends to be more uh, junior, senior years because that's about when the students are starting to get into the thick of their security courses. Now, this competition is open to all students. If you don't have to be a security major or even a technology major. Okay? You just have to have an interest in it to try out for the team. And if you try out for the team and you win a spot, because we have, just like a regular football team, we have a roster. We can only have 12 people on the roster. Only eight compete at any given point in time. We've seen schools that show up and they'll only have three or four students. KSU has almost always had a nearly full roster. We do have interest in the field here. And so I encourage you that if you're a student and you have an interest in this area, let us know because we want to get everyone at least thinking about cybersecurity, whether or not you decide to be a cybersecurity professional. Some information, if you want more information uh, about any of these degree programs. We, I, if you uh, can't remember all this, just send me an email at infosec at kennesaw.edu after the event and I will send you this slide, okay, so that you can know who to get in contact with. Several of the faculty that you see here are available now. Dr. Herb Matter sitting here in the front. You can talk to him uh, during the break. Professor Andy Green sitting in the corner. I'm interrupting his lunch. Uh, he's in charge of the BBA ISA program. Uh, and I basically am there to give information out to anybody who wants it. So shoot me an email, I'll hook you up. At this point in time, um, I'll be happy to open it up, take any questions that you might have. Yes, ma'am. Right. Right. If you have a BBA or a bachelor's from a college of business that's AACSB accredited, odds are you would wipe out your first two years because it's BBA. BBA is BBA is BBA. Yeah, a, a business degree from an AACSB school of business is almost always relatively identical. Let me put it this way, you would have very few courses to worry about. Best thing to do though is sit down with one of the advisors in the uh, Cole's Undergraduate Program Advising Center. Cole's, you, I understand, but they can, they have a chart. Well, it's actually a piece of software that can do comparative analysis based on what you had and what you need. And odds are it will, it will, it will go across and there won't be, you'd be surprised. And it's, it's funny as the, the relationship between music and math knowledge and that can provide a good foundation. It's really about analytical thinking more than it is about, yeah, I've been playing with Linux servers since I was 12. We tend to see that that's a chicken and egg argument. I played with Linux servers since I was 12 because I have an analytical mind. Okay, I didn't realize that that was a job market for me, but I have an analytical mind. Maybe I can do well in it. It's certainly worth exploring, and I don't tell anybody, no, you're not suited for the job, except for the ones that flunked my class. Okay, and then I tell them with additional preparation you can turn that around. Okay, so and it's interesting is you'll get into the job, you'll get into the classes, and unlike some of the lower gen ed classes, it's a lot of work, and in some cases it's a lot of outside work. You may walk into a class, and we have the assumption that you have a certain base level of knowledge. That doesn't mean you can't succeed in the class. It just means you got a little extra homework to do to get along. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Right? For the competition? Yeah. Th there are resources available. The first step is to get linked up with the person coordinating the team for the year because they practice. They get together on Saturdays. 
order pizza, sit in the lab, and go through previous scenarios and, and rehearse. Figure out what everybody's strength is. When you've got an eight-person team, everybody doesn't have to be a Linux mail server administrator. You just need one person to do that. Somebody else has got to be a project manager. Somebody else has got to have some Windows skills. Somebody else might have to have Mac skills for all we know because every year we change the scenario. All right, so there are general resources that we'd be happy to share with you that says if you want to get into the cybersecurity competition, here's some information from previous years. Like there's a team packet that describes the event, gives the history, and describes a previous scenario. That slide that I had with the network diagram goes into much more detail about what particular services were being offered that year. We put that, that document out sometime in uh, early February because the prelim is usually late February. The on-site competition for the top eight teams is during KSU's spring break. It's the only time we can get enough rooms. We occupy the entirety of the classrooms on the Coles third floor. Have to lay in our own physical networking. Okay, so yes there are resources uh, but like I was saying is that they, the team needs diverse expertise and knowledge area. And I have seen MBA students come in and be good team leaders. They handle the communications with corporate. They handle project management and workflow management. So it's not necessarily all hard technical skills. So uh, if, if you want to shoot an email to InfoSec, I can share with you what I can share with you. Yes, sir. There you go. If you'll shoot me an email, anybody ask, I will send them to you. So that's our point of contact. Problems are being solved. Anybody else? If not, I appreciate your time. Best of luck.